because that is not the disease. Uh, the people, the names, and you've, you've heard them before, the Rockefeller, the Rothschild, the, uh, the names are infamous by now, and they go back decades and generation after generation through history. That's where the attack has to be. And they are so well hidden, so obscured. Uh, you know, people, again, yeah, the left, the right, the conservative, the liberal, the Democrat, the Republican, the this, the that, the something else. And, and that's just all of the near. Uh, it's a, it's smoke and mirrors. It's them. Right. What was the uh, favorite phrase, uh, famous phrase about David Rockefeller? He didn't want to become president because it would be a demotion. So, um, so certainly that, that I think that is part of the point. But as you mentioned, I think government is a, a front for them because it does take the heat off of them. So without government, I guess they wouldn't have that ability. But Larkin, what, what's your comment on that? I yeah, I hugely agree with a lot of that. I disagree with the conclusion. I totally agree that the the politics that we see on the TV is a puppet show. It's a show put on for the masses to make them think they have power and to think there's this important game going on. And yeah, they're left and right. They're all puppets of the people who have pretty much ruled the world forever. Now, I don't know exactly who all they are. I know the names of Rockefellers and the Bilderbergers and yada, yada, yada. And so, yes, I totally agree that it's, it's a puppet show and the, you know, the, the puppet of the day that's put in front of us, Obama, Clinton, Bush, whoever it is. Uh, doesn't really matter. And in the long run, they're not really the ones running the show. However, I would say the ones running the show do not matter if their puppets are not imagined to be authority and government. We don't actually have to target them. We don't have to beat them up. We don't have to put them on trial. Let's say tomorrow everybody woke up and they stopped acknowledging, they stopped imagining some moral obligation to obey the crooks in Washington. Yeah, you know, let's say they don't even know what's going on behind the scenes because most of them don't. It doesn't even matter because then the Fed say, hey, you're supposed to use our, our pieces of paper. And everyone says, yeah, but they're falling in value and always have been and always will be. We're going to move to silver or something and we're not going to give the IRS any money and we're not going to do what you say. Even the ones behind the scene, even their power all rests on the illusion of authority. And if we just step away, I mean, that's the ultimate example of of the power of mind control. The entire gigantic financial fraud, the Federal Reserve, all the fiat currency, the fractional banking, that whole scam that's enslaved the planet is all, it only works because of the illusion and the deception. If people just look at it and go, oh, so they're making up money out of thin air and loaning it to us, and okay, let's just not deal with them. That's the end. Game over for them. They are out of power. They are nothing ever again if the people just understood it and stepped away from it. No revolution, no big, you know, dramatic war or something. If people just understood the scam and said, well, yeah, let's not do that anymore. Let's not borrow fake money made out of thin air and let's not use fake currency that those crooks over there keep printing. That's it. The, the game's over which is why I focus so much on it's what people believe and it's what they imagine reality to be that's the problem. You know, yes, you can point out some really evil, nasty, scheming, murderous psychos who are doing huge destructive things, but it's all by way of this belief in authority. And we don't have to figure out a way to, to topple their regime other than having their slaves figure out that they shouldn't be slaves. And that all by itself ends the entire scheme. Okay, thanks for the call, Tom. Uh, we have time for one more call, so let's squeeze in Lark from Texas. Lark, uh, you're on the air. What's on your mind? Well, hi, James. Larkin. Uh, great conversation. Hey. Uh, uh, perhaps one of you could help me out with the precise quote. I think uh, Buck Mr. Fuller said that if you want to change the world or change yourself, you have to build a better model. And so I applaud your work. Uh, Larkin, I think that, uh, quite frankly, we need to kind of declare our independence from uh, being forced to, into participating in organized crime. Yeah, absolutely. And the first step of that is having people recognize that that's what it is. In fact, that's almost the only step. And for years, I didn't recognize it. I thought, well, of course, somebody has to be in charge, and of course, you have to have taxes, and of course, you have to... And that's why... Everything I do now is trying to tell people, you know, 
yes, there's lots of bad things happening, and the root cause can be found between your right ear and your left ear, and between the ears of several billion other people. It cannot be found in Washington. It cannot be found. We have to change our understanding of reality, and then the world can fix itself. I mean, the most important thing I've ever written is my book called The Most Dangerous Superstition, which basically goes into how the way we imagine reality, the, this is what's so sad, the way good people imagine reality is why we have mass oppression and tyranny and warmongering and, and evil going on all over the place. It isn't because the bad people are bad, it's because the good people are imagining something that isn't real. And until they change the way they see the world, they can bash their heads against the wall, you know, day and night as long as they want, like we've been doing for a couple hundred years in this country, and it keeps getting worse. They have to change their understanding of the reality around them before the world will improve at all. And it's something people don't want to hear. They don't, they'd much rather point a finger and say, that guy's bad, that guy's bad. Okay, that's fine. And it's totally true in a lot of cases. But you're misunderstanding reality, and you're not the solution until you know what's true. Very wise words, and it's something I've said before, and will say again, the only revolution that matters is the revolution of the mind. Again, the only revolution that matters is the revolution of the mind. Again, the only revolution that matters is the revolution of the mind.